Hi and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Nienke de Glas. I'm a clinical epidemiologist and a medical oncology fellow. And in this video, I want to introduce the topic of breast cancer treatment in older patients. So this is a topic that I'm quite passionate about. My PhD was actually about breast cancer treatment in older adults. And here I want to give you a short introduction of why this is an important subject and why we should really look into breast cancer in older adults specifically. So let's get started. So unfortunately, we see that breast cancer mortality increases with age. So this means that when you get breast cancer at an older age, the chance of dying from breast cancer increases. And this is here represented by the red lines down below in the graphs. So on the right side, you can see the oldest patients. However, as you can already see in this curve, the chance of dying of other causes, which is here represented by the blue bars, strongly increases with age, even more so than breast cancer mortality. And here you can see that this risk of competing mortality or other cause mortality is strongly correlated with age itself, but also with comorbidity. So patients of a high age with multiple other diseases have a strongly increased risk of dying of other causes. Unfortunately, if we look at the past years, we see a very limited improvement in outcome in older adults. So because of improvements in, in treatment strategies and in personalized treatments, uh, we see that in the youngest patients, the overall survival and the uh, breast cancer specific survival have strongly increased, as you can see here. But in the oldest patients over the age of 75, there have nearly been no improvements. This is a very limited improvement that we see here. So older patients are still lagging behind when it comes to benefits of new developments in cancer treatment. So although we're very used to look at survival outcomes, and of course this is an important topic when we talk about the outcome of patients with cancer, it's also important to look at other outcomes. And for older adults, functional outcomes such as physical performance measures may even be more important. And unfortunately here we also see that older adults are performing less well than younger patients. So here you can see data from the TEAM trial, which was a randomized a controlled trial in adjuvant endocrine therapy. You can see that one year after treatment, all patients decline a bit in their physical performance, but the youngest patients have a higher chance of improving again to their older levels, while the oldest patients are remaining on that lower level of physical performance. So this also shows that the risk of functional decline increases when we age. So what are possible reasons for these poor outcomes? Well, first of all, there's very limited evidence in how we should treat older adults with cancer in general. And this specifically also applies to breast cancer patients. And this can be explained because older adults are frequently underrepresented in randomized clinical trials on which we base our oncological treatments. Also, there is, as a result of this, a very high treatment variation. And this applies to uh, uh, different parts of the treatment. So rates of surgical treatment strongly differ between countries and between hospitals. But also the choices for adjuvant treatment. So for example, chemotherapy or endocrine therapy are strongly different between different regions in the world. And this can result in under treatment of patients because of a fear of toxicity or adverse outcomes. And on the other hand, there might also be patients that are currently overtreated and might receive too much treatment, which can eventually do more harm than good. So here it's again important to think about the risk of competing events, as I mentioned earlier. And this is an example of a study that investigated treatment variation within Europe. So here you can see different countries within Europe, and we see here very early stage breast cancer, so stage 1 treatment, and we're looking at different modalities of breast cancer treatment. And as you can see, for example, in the blue lines, the rates of surgical treatment is strongly different between the different uh, countries. These differences become, become even larger if we look at patients with more advanced breast cancer. So here you can see patients with stage 3 breast cancer. And again, you can see that the rates of surgical treatment are strongly different uh, if we look at different countries in Europe. So for example, in Ireland, these patients receive surgical treatment in almost half of their cases, while for example in Belgium, this is almost 80%. So this is a very high difference. And similarly, if we look at adjuvant chemotherapy, which is generally indicated in patients with stage 3 breast cancer, in the Netherlands, only about 5 to 10% of patients over 70 receive these treatments, 
uh, compared to, for example, 40% in Poland. So this shows that there are very large differences in how we treat these patients. And basically, as doctors, we don't really know what is the best treatment for which patient. So, of course, in all older patients with cancer, it's important to weigh the benefits and risks of treatment. But this is even more important in older adults. And so on the, on the one hand, we want to have patients living as long as they can, despite their cancer. But on the other hand, we want to prevent side effects. We want to prevent a decrease in quality of life. And we want to prevent functional decline. So this really requires a personalized approach to older patients with cancer. So what are possible solutions to improve the outcomes for older patients with cancer? Well, first of all, prediction tools can really aid in individualizing treatment strategies. And I will talk a bit more about this in the follow-up video. Also, it's important as clinicians and as researchers that we keep trying to improve the evidence. So we must perform more clinical studies and also cohort studies in this specific population that do not only take into account the general cancer outcomes such as survival, but also look at competing mortality, quality of life and functional decline, and that really incorporate relevant clinical predictors of outcome. So also taking into account geriatric characteristics and uh, comorbidity, for example. So if you want to know more about this topic, I can recommend to take a look at this website of SIOC, which is the International Organization of Geriatric Oncology, because it advocates for improvement of outcomes of these patients. And in the next videos, I will talk in a bit more detail about how we can improve outcomes of breast cancer in older adults. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you next time.